Hi right, folks, this is the old rack. This has to go. We're going to go right and drive and uh, get this converted over. The rack I got is in pretty poor condition, so what we're going to do is get that tore down, completely rebuilt up from scratch, and get into the car as quick as we can. So this is the rack from the uh, from my own car actually, and uh, it was in fairly good condition. There was a little bit of slop, I remember, but it might be in actually uh, one of the other joints. So it's part of my kit the dashboard pedals I got a right hand drive one and as you can see it looks rough so what we're going to do is break this down and uh, clean her up try to get her running nice and smooth again hopefully it's salvageable or else I just bought a piece of shit I battled with trying to get this fella off here um, well seized on but uh, got the outside knuckle off the bolt I kept binding so I had to cut that so that's gone. So next I want to do is take off this fella here. Let you see what's going on inside. Hopefully there's not a spring going to fire out of me here. There is. Spring and shim. So this little, it's like a little brass cup in here. It doesn't seem to want to come out. So we're going to open up the back here. And we'll just see if this little bolt is stopping from coming out any further. It might be. Might be just retaining it just a little bit. Possibly. So there we go, that's a little cup that's kind of pressing down, so it's obviously running along the rack in some way, keeping it all nice and uh, squared off, keeping a bit of pressure on it, and with the state of the rack then that's just going to be grinding on that, so it's not going to be nice. Oh yeah, so I had a circlip in here, there's one on the inside and one on the outside. So I've removed the outside one and kind of hoping that this comes up. Kind of looks like it does want to come up. It's just all the dirt up here that's blocking it. This bearing is all exposed, so I'm going to go off and get a new one. I'm grabbing the back of the shafter. You can see that I'm just grabbing at the shafter, so it's not too bad. are bearing out. Oh, it's so grindy. It's horrible. So I had to get the uh, wire brush at this point here because I kept jamming. And there we go. That is the shaft out. Looking deadly. So uh, if you look out here, it's just the end down here just seems to be a little bit corroded. I don't know if I'm going to go. I'll just give it a good sanding up. It might be good enough to use. This end here looking a little bit rough as well. I might have to get a, give it a little turn on a lathe just to get back to being nice and round. Um, sorry, just here we go. Um, yeah, so I'll just have to kind of just tie around it for a while to see what way I'm going to treat it. And the hole, it's not too bad. These little runners here, I have to try and find out what those liners are on them. Um, maybe get them replaced. I'm not too sure what way they're actually done. I think it's salvageable. I think it definitely needs a good hole going over from head to toe anyway. You can see the kind of pitting, let's see if I can get this in focus here now, the pitting that's kind of affected all of that. So I'll give it a bit of a clean down with a brake cleaner and uh, we have a kind of highlight where the damage is. So I'm going to start sanding this now and trying to see if I can get back to kind of a more level uh, surface. I, I don't really mind if there's kind of pits in the surface, um, as long as the plane of the surface is good, it should be fine to actually travel through the little uh, runners that uh, uh, made it to but just if it's kind of rough like that it's going to wear them out uh, prematurely so I'm just going to start standing on that now next. Looking a little bit better now. Okay, just for shits and giggles, the wind burner flashing. I think my battery must be nearly dead. Uh, we can see that this is a uh, 25. So I'm gonna go up here and just see what these are like at the ends. And you can see there it's a uh, 24. Oh, the 25 mark. 25. 
So I have it all cleaned off and now I stuck on some rust inhibitor because that metal was uh, basically corroded. Uh, so I'll put that on, that should stop any further action. And then we can prime it and paint it. And I've cleaned off the aluminium so it looks nice and fresh. And all the other parts are all gonna be replaced. So uh, this is actually gonna look quite good when it's finished. Um, I'm not gonna go and bother with the uh, brass inserts here, to be honest. I looked at them there and there's always a little bit of play in them. And when there's grease in there, it's gonna be even better. And then you have this like tensioner uh, component that does be pressed down on a little bit of force and that kind of takes a lot of the rattles out at that point. So just make sure that the gears are binding nicely. So I don't think there's gonna be any issues with it. Oh, so we'll let that dry on. We'll get prime painted. And in the meantime, then we'll get a new bearing because this one is wrecked, and then there's a little seal that goes on the outside of that as well. I think there might be a grease nipple for here, I'm not too sure, but uh, we can go off and get them after. Okay, so I uh, gave this a uh, little bit of treatment with a uh, rust inhibitor and then came in and gave it a couple of layers of paint. So the stock looks quite good. Let me just clean out all the interior up along here, just to make sure that uh, everything is good to go. So we're gonna try and see if we can start assembling this now. So I think the first thing we need to do is get the rack ready to go in. Okay, um, one thing I noticed that uh, this rack here had a little bit of corrosion up at the very, very end here. So we give it a good wire brush and a clean out, but if you can look at it closely, it's kind of uh, stippled. It's like the corrosion has kind of got down into it a little bit. Now the rack as a whole is fine, but I just want to make sure that those surfaces are nice and smooth. So I've gone off now and just got file and I'm just going to go along all of these and make sure they're all nice and uh, clean uh, hopefully that uh, make it run a bit better okay, so we've gone down to all of them there now you can see that everything looks nice and flat so it's good it'll wash out now with a brake cleaner and uh, then we're going to grease it up and put it inside the, uh, the stock itself So I'm just going to uh, kind of grease up on the inside. I'm not going to do the shaft as it's going through until I get to the rack. So uh, that way I won't have all the grease squeezing out the front of it here. So as far as I know, just a matter of pushing it in now. This rack will be pointed down this way because it's going to meet with the pinion on this side. I'm just going to point it up for now just so we can get some grease pressed onto it here. This grease is quite um, not so viscous. I was hoping it'd be a bit more viscous but yeah, probably make it a bit nicer when it's running inside the rack as well. Just push it down to the rack itself and we'll start feeding it through. So where the uh, rack goes in, rightly, goes in through here. And what I've done in the meantime is I've gone and replaced that shitty bearing that's there with uh, a new sealed bearing. And uh, there wasn't much evidence of what was on the outside of this. So just kind of judging by what should be out there, I got a seal. The seal will go up on the outside here, all going well. So uh, we're gonna tap on the bearing now. We'll tap that down to its location and we'll just start rotating and see how it feels going across the whole stroke. So this fellow's gonna go down here. Just help it with just a little bit of grease and take any bite out of it. So the bearing nicely pushed in there. And as you can see, it's a seal bearing. Uh, one thing <laughs> that you're going to see now is that this bearing is in here, it's going to be sealed and then there's going to be a seal put on top of that and um, that's just to kind of make sure that there's no kind of grease coming in anywhere around this. It's it's way overkill but uh, technically speaking there should be some sort of seal on the outside here. That's why we're going to see two of these. Next thing we want to do is get this little uh, clip pushed down and we want that to uh, Kind of just engage with the little groove on this before we put it all together. It stops things from sliding out of shape. 
Okay. Just gonna slap that down now. So that clip just barely kind of gets in there. It's not uh, the most steepest uh, groove, but uh, it's just enough to kind of stop the shaft from hopping around when it's inside. So next thing, just to prevent it from hydro-locking, you're about having that clean and the hole that it uh, goes into clean. If you've got grease built up down there, she'll actually kind of airlock uh, or hydro-lock when uh, you push it in. So I'm going to hopefully feed it through nice and clean. Next now we have our other clip. I might make a yuppie. This is our clip. I won't feed this down below. And we'll tap it on home then with the uh, screwdriver and hammer. Snap. Snap. So we're doing that now. We have a clip on the, both the shaft and this. So that's all kind of locked in together. So lastly then, we're going to seal it all up. So, all right. It's be a bit messier than I was expecting, but it's in there now. So as you can see, shaft is in, nice and tight. Actually, it feels really, really tasty there now, just having it all kind of contained there together. So uh, all the roughness has gone out of it. And this is the end of the rack that was actually uh, slightly corroded, so. The fact that that's kind of turned nice and smoother and it was a pleasure. So, on the back here then we kind of have a, a squeeze plate. We have this fella here, he kind of sits into the back onto the grooves in here, like so, inside. And then there's shims inside here and the one that's pressed tight against it. Now, I don't have detail on how tight this gets pushed in, but I think I just have to Put it back to where it was, I think it's probably the best approach. Now I don't see any upper or lower parts of that, so I think this just goes in straight. So threads involved here. Yeah. So this is another scenario here where we're kind of hydro locking again. You can see the grease squeeze down at the bottom. Then I'll just the hole here. Home. No, the shins, the camera there, are here. Um, I'm just going to go back to what was actually fitted into it. I'm sure whoever put it in before, or if it's factory, it's there. Um, and I'm setting that works for this exact assembly. Pop the two of them in. No, I'm going to change my gloves for the next bit because uh, the next bit is painted. Okay, so our little brass plunger is in. There's a couple of spacers on it and those spacers are kind of pushing back against this spring. The spring is quite uh, a high rating actually. So it's going to be putting a lot of force in on there. And then that gets pressed up against this surface here. So let's assemble. That dynamic has definitely changed the characteristic of the, uh, the whole assembly. So here it's nice and kind of resisted a little bit. I think probably the best thing to do is lock her in at that and you won't really really know how it's going to behave until it's actually in the car. So if you're finding that you're steering out of a corner and letting go of the steering wheel and she's not really wanting to come back by itself, Maybe too much resistance in that. Possibly, not, not definite. So I think what we'll do is we'll try and lock her in at that. I should probably refer to a manual on this, but I'm just too lazy. And forgive my use of vice grip. I need to do a work for me today. Lovely. So let's see if she's still going. Yeah, it's nice and slick, and there's no real rattle out of it. So it's nice and tight. So next are these uh, end plugs here. Um, 
have these little uh, rubber bungs. I think they're like some sort of plastic. And they're like when the rack comes and hits at the end, it's not like tong, and steel on steel. It's just uh, something to dampen that force. So we have these springs that are up in these cavities here. So you can see here, that's a little cavity. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease in with that guy actually because I think the trick to a slick rack is just a good, good amount of lubrication. I need the little cups that I'm putting into it. Just cleaning off any of the old grease on it. And fishing on new stuff. So the ball joint will be pressed up into that now. Um, the spring, it'll take out any kind of knocks or rattles in it. So that's that end piece. Uh, this is uh, one of the ball joints off the rack that came on the car and I want to um, make sure that's nicely greased up. Now I'm missing a nut of this. So these are the nuts that kind of came with, like little square nuts and they uh, run in beyond and then... Oh, it's actually running nice and free now. So these go in beyond how far they go in and then they lock back on it just to stop it from uh, opening. So all of these small threads are standard right thread. So plug or cup spring already in that presses against the back of the, uh, the ball joint. And I'm hoping that this goes in far enough now that lock back against this it doesn't so I'm gonna to have to uh, clamp the shaft here why not nut there's obviously a little bit of damage on those treads there get that in beyond tighten this up and lock it back against it All right, guys I gently grabbed the rack back here and I've got to kind of tighten that back as far as I possibly can through uh, just the resistant part of the treads it seems to be fine and now I've tightened this in by hand as far as it's bottoming out on the inside of the shaft here. So I'm just going to give that through a very, very rough means with a uh, wrench. So you see now, even though I'm tightening up as hard as I can, this is still free to move because that's spring loaded uh, action with the cup on the end of it. So now I just need to bring this guy tight and uh, lock it in. Any tighter than that. So now this little damper uh, ring can stay here. What we're going to do is we're going to wind the rack all the way to the left and take out all the extra, extra grease. Now we'll rinse and repeat on the other side. The big difference you're going to see now is that the tread on this side is reverse. It's a uh, lefty tighty, uh, righty loosey. Um, just so that when you're actually um, tracking uh, the car, you're still twisting the two in the same way and you're actually able to make the wheels do that. Now, next thing we should look at is the boots. That's going to cover over from here to here on both sides. Okay, so too lazy to go off and get a genuine article. So I've up the local crowd and got some nice uh, universal ones. So we need to just make sure that um, that these holes will actually match the original. Now these are a lot more flexible than our current one, the current ones, but I reckon it's going to be up around that hole there. 38.7. And this one about 36. So we're going to trim off this front lip here and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so let's see if this fits over everything. I'm going to commit and say it is. So we're going to grease up the ball joint again. Let's 
So nice cold piece of mud. These are quite rubbery and flexible, so uh, I'm hoping they'll just stretch out over all of this. Got a groove to sit down under now anyway. Everything got a little bit greased up, so I'm just gonna clean it off. So there's a groove there that we need to kind of take advantage of, so we'll see if these uh, supply cable ties are sufficient for, for our needs. I'm guessing they might not. Look at that. It's actually going nowhere. And whatever you do, make sure you always cut these at an angle and leave a sharp edge for other people to go and cut themselves on. No. With it. Oh, do the same on the other side. Okay, both sides are on. Uh, the last little screw that came out of here, just gonna pop that back in. It seems to be like a block for a grease nipple. One more opening up here. I just have to go online and just see what the story was that what the story is with that, but I presume it's just another location for a grease nipple. And that's how you pack the grease in. But, uh, that is the assembly guys. Now there's another little clip that goes on here. I need to find out if it's necessary. It was on both racks. So I'm sure if it was there, it was there for a reason. Last but not least are the uh, track rod ends. There will be a left and right thread of this. So before they go on, there is a locking nut, which I have one of here. Here. Alright folks, that's it. Rack is put together. Happy days. This is ready to be just dropped in right now. Um, we just need to kind of figure out what that hole is first. Or we bung it up with a grease nipple and it'll be good to go. Uh, the reason we want to get the rack together now and have it popped in the car is that uh, we're going to be getting this painted fairly soon and I want to be able to manoeuvre the car around. Uh, guys, and as always, uh, all the likes and subscribes, I'd really appreciate them. Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye bye.